Okay, so we're doing a header between 54 and 74 inches. So I'm making a mark at 53 3 8 and 74 5 8 and that's to count for drywall return. I'm going to do it on the both sides. Oh, look at this side slightly higher. Slightly, slightly higher. I'll just do a quick check. And yeah, a little bit, a little bit higher. We're going to want to go off the high side typically, okay, uh, when you're laying these out. Uh, you always check with the laser both sides and whichever side is higher, okay, that's the one you ultimately set your laser to. Okay, this is pretty close. I'm just gonna roll with it. I already squared that across. But yeah, if I just can, boom. Yeah, see on this side, it's perfectly uh, the same as the other. So that's wicked. That means you have level concrete. Okay, I like to mark. <laughs> I like to mark my, my line. This one is not it. And I'll square it across here. I know they're, I know they're good. Boom, boom. Just for fun, I'll check the top. It's also kind of good too to do a little check to make sure everything's good. See, like this is a little bit off, right? So I'm gonna double check this. 74, five eighths. 74, half. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna raise it up a bit. Fucking fat markers. Alright, um, 74. This is here. I'm gonna raise this a bit. Yeah, baby. And that'll be our mark. So to get your measurement for the box beam, you want to go on the bottom. Bottom, bottom. And yeah, exactly. 145 and a big quarter. 145 and a big quarter. Okay. Okay. That's our box beam length, okay? We're gonna put a piece of angle up here, a piece of angle up here, and uh, set our beam on, boom. And then this will just be a normal header at the bottom. Normal everyday header. Now it's just a little bit over 12 feet, so that's kind of shitty, but. All right, I have all my pieces pre-cut. I'm gonna, because like I said, it's just a little bit over 12 feet. I took the 12 foot studs and I cut them, uh, you know, on different sizes so that it wasn't, I wasn't adding like a one inch piece at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'll stagger the joint as well. So I'll, I'll start with the short one here because I'm going short, long to a short piece over there and then I'll do the opposite at the top, okay? So basically doing that box beam is all about clamping. Clamping in the right spot um, on the on, on the ends here, we want to be flush with your stud, but you got you want to get in the corner, literally right on the corner, and clamp it in. Okay, it's uh, it's a that's the trick to this. And then basically what I do is I go and I clamp every knockout in the corner exactly like that. Okay, and make sure make sure the studs in the in the beam nice and tight, nice and square. Okay, and I'll put a screw in. This light gauge and stuff is so fun to work with sometimes. I don't really do this with heavy gauge.
And then after I'll go back and I'll put another screw in between as well, you'll see. side and you can see essentially there's a screw every foot right and I'll flip the bitch around Feel it tightening up. It's perfect. 
Especially when it comes to the clips on the actual stud part, you know, you can put angle, or you can put track, you can put angle on the top and bottom, you know, you can do whatever you want, right? I'm just putting angle, especially with the light gauge, it'll sit right on top, and I'll have my track side to side, and I'll put cripples in for my to catch it, like. studs up so that they're not sticking past. Right on. Gosh. This thing keeps loosening on me here. Boom. And then the same thing. Every two feet. And that's why I keep my, I need to get more screws. That's why I keep my knockouts the same here too. On both sides, I can go screw and then screw both sides. insulation in these walls but if there were insulation you would stuff the beam with insulation as well but we're, we're not we're not here because there isn't any insulation in the wall okay so after you get your your, your, after you get your track tacked in on every two foot, you go back again like you did on the bottom and put a screw in every foot. I pre-installed a piece of angle here on the top on the end. So remember to leave like some room at the end for your screws, okay? For, to screw the angle in. I got a piece on both sides. And then I also pre-installed angle here on the studs. I've also pre-installed the angle at the top on the studs where the box beam is going. So now what I'm gonna do is bring the beam Super strong. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Line it up. Line it up to your steel. Okay. 
Now remember this track is always a little bit bigger than stud. So you just split the difference. Oop, wrong screw. about this is you can't clamp them so a little bit of a pain sometimes heavy gauge is so much easier <laughs> No such thing as luck, only skill. Yeah. <laughs> Pins drop and crony skill. Ugh. Wrong damn screw. Oh yeah. I get the top screwed in. You got yourself a light gauge box beam. And then uh, simply just, I got my centers already drawn out. Uh, uh, it's simple, I, all I do is I measure over at the bottom to the first 16, right, from the hard side to the first center, and then I just simply put it up top, and it's already at the, on the top track. And you can tell I already braced, I put braces up at the top as well to pick up the header. So this is gonna be very strong. Alright, let's see here. Hopefully 
Oh yeah, 63 quarter, baby. 63 quarter, all the way across. That's mid, that's what you want. Okay, so for the bottom sill now here, I want to put, I need to put a, a clip, a clip in the track. So I want to find out a place that is close, uh, you know, that will not run into a stud. So in this case, I have to set my clip at 90. So basically what I've done over here is I have my bottom track. I'm going to have a two inch shoe on the end. So I'm going to mark 92, which will represent 90 for the clip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw a piece of 6 inch track or stud right here at 90. I'm also going to check I got two, only two and three quarter. It's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. Uh, so I'm going to cut this to 6 inch. Alright, same thing. I'm going to clip it, clamp it right on the edge and I'm going to put two screws in this side and two screws on that side. Okay, so I'm going to pre-mark my centers as well. All right, 16, 32, 48 and so on. I have the brace in and now you can see where I laid, laid out the joint and the clip as opposed to where the closest studs are. Okay, so it's not going to interfere with my stud. I planned that out ahead of time. I'm not going to put the two screws in here until I get it set to, to perfectly level first and then I'll screw it in. But yeah, you can see I got the two inch shoes on either end. Okay, two inch shoe and then I'll pick it up on the, with the centers in the wall. Okay, so I'm going to pre-cut all my steel. And yeah, so we got a square line by looking at the bottom. That's why I like to square over my, my lines. But uh, we'll set either side, okay? Screw it in, put a screw on each side, and we'll level out the metal with a couple studs, and uh, yeah, away we go. Beautiful. So basically when you put the, the bottom one on, oh, nice and sturdy, you're, you're just gonna like I'm saying you're gonna you're gonna what I do is I go to the joint first and I level the front square it back square my studs and and square the track and then I'll go like you know in the middle square one out level it square one out, level it and then yeah it's literally just uh, clamp and square and screw off every stud as you go at the very end is when I clamp it in the corner again and I add that final screw to the to the clip to the joint, right? So that's super super sturdy. The box super sturdy, not going nowhere. Like it's super once the drywall's on, yeah, we're laughing. We got lots of support up there for drywall. <sighs> Booyaka. That's that. <laughs>